Hey, welcome to MSE TV Network BB Live podcast on Instagram today. Thank you for joining us. It is a pleasure. So today we're going to be talking about your life and your experiences. So welcome to MSC TV Network, second in command. You're doing an awesome job. Love you like cooked food. Yeah, yeah. So it's my pleasure off, to be here. Huh? I said it's my pleasure to be here. And I'm glad to be a part of MSC TV Network. And we're glad to have you. So uh, for the interview's sake, would you rather be called Kabibi or do you want to be called Mishka? I want to be called Kabibi. <laughs> okay. All right. Big up the thing. Right. So let's start off by where were you born? I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long have you been in entertainment? I've started in entertainment from I was about 12, so it's been a while. I have just started a couple of years ago doing movies and talk shows and stuff like that. But for music, I started at 13. Right. So let's take it a step further. Start telling the people from when you were younger about your life and your struggles to where you have reached now? Uh, my life, it's, I, have, I was raised in St. Thomas from the age of six months until I was nine years old. I came back to Kingston living with my aunt. There was a series of things that took place in my life throughout those course of the years I was living in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. I was I was raped at a um, young age, and I was not known as a chubby teen, but I had developed certain issue in my life, trust issue, and also relationship issues and stuff like that. I oh, didn't okay. know my mom. Okay, let's go back a little bit. I know it might be hard, but you said you was raped at what age? I was raped when I was about eight or nine. Wow, that's young. So tell us a little bit about the rape because we're dealing with true events and true stories that might be painful to talk about, but I feel it's important because you need to heal and also it might help our listeners today to heal. I was, I was raped by my grandmother's stepson um wow. was um left to take care of us um me and my cousin while my grandma went to coronation market where she used to sell carrots and stuff like that so i was left in the care of him and and that saturday he did that to me um when my grandma came home i i didn't know what know how to explain to her what I took, took place, place right stuff like that I just know that I was bleeding and I was in pain and I told her and she didn't really explain in details what was happening but we cried for a minute and I know she got um, overly protective of me more I wasn't allowed to go out like I used to and I was always crying and stuff and then over time um, I came to live in Kingston with my aunt. Let me, my ask, aunt you, let me ask you a question, sorry. Um, was he made accountable by your grandmother? Ah? Uh? Was, was the person that raped you was he held responsible and accountable by your grandmother or anybody? No, um, he wasn't held um, accountable for it. Um, it was like a secret in the community and also in my family. 
because no one really knew what took place over the years. I started talking about it when I was um, a teenager, mm -hmm. when I started having outbursts and mostly males, I'll put up fight against them, I'll get into fight with most of the males. And then I start having the same problems with other persons in my family and around my family. They start making the same gesture or the same advance at me. But by this time I was older and I was more aggressive. So I start putting up a defense against anybody who would want to touch me or wanted to even get close to me as long as they're male. I confide in my uncle baby mother and I told, told her about something that was taking place in my house at the time because he started making gesture like touching me when I was sleeping and stuff like that. And I know where it was going so I, right. I told her and then my auntie friend found out about it and then all hell break loose. Good. Um, so their relationship was pulled apart after a couple of years because I'd left because I thought I was the one who was causing all the problems and the issue in their relationship. So I'd left. And then I noticed other men in my family started to do, do this. Um, like in-laws and stuff like that. But right. I think far away from, from them as possible. At one point, I was made to feel like whatever had happened to me, it was basically my Your fault. fault. Right, right. I'm also a survivor of molestation um, within my family. And uh, when I was 19, when I admitted it to particular family members and uh, I was told I must have liked it why I didn't say anything. Mind you, the molestation started from the age of five yeah. to 11. You understand what I mean? So I totally understand where you're coming from. It's very painful. It's very hard. Uh, you're very confused because you feel like, did I do something to compare? you know, contribute for this person yeah. to, you know, uh, attack me like this and abuse me like this, but it's not your fault. So moving right along, and thank you for sharing that because that's very difficult. When you left home now, um, tell me a little bit about how your life was when you left home. When I left home, I actually ran away from home. I actually couldn't <laughs> I couldn't deal with certain stuff anymore so I thought I was causing all the problems between my auntie and her boyfriend at that time right. and I was the center of the conversation at that time most of the time because we're living in a home that it was full of um physical abuse verbal emotional and stuff like right. that right and I was causing the problem because I said I was going to kill him. If he right. Touch me and stuff. So after the problems, I ran away. When I ran away, I went to live with friends. Just wanted to be me. Just wanted to just do me. And it didn't work out. It was for like a short period of time. And then I went to my mom. <laughs> that was a different story when I went. So what happened when you went to your mom? What age were you at that time? I was I was 18. I was 18 when I went to live with my mom. When I went to live with my mom, there was a lot of problems there also. Right. Because um, she was what I, was, I wanted for a mom. None at all. I was faced with also the problems that my stepfather was molesting my sisters that time what and, you saying <laughs> and i was pissed at hell as as hell i wanted to get both of them locked up but my younger sister said she wasn't going to sign the paper for them to get locked up after that they all went on doing whatever and stuff like that i ended up going to live with my baby father 
at that time. It wasn't something that I wanted, but to get away from everything that I was faced with, I was forced at that point to live with him because I thought at that time though that was sanity for me. That right. was that was safe. I started to figure out that that wasn't safe for me either. Why? But by that time why I why yes. was it safe? Why wasn't it safe for you to stay with him? Because his family didn't really like me. They didn't know me, but they didn't like me. And I was like outcast there. But I put up my defense against them. And like one and a half year in the relationship with him, I got pregnant with my first son. <laughs> right. Yeah? So. I stayed beating all the odds. I stayed. I said, okay, I was going to stay and try to raise my son so that I can become a better mother than my mother and stuff like that. Right. But over the years, I think I stayed in that relationship because it was not only physical, but it was mostly mentally, emotionally, and verbally abusive for me. Right. Well, abuse is abuse. And it comes in many forms, you know, that financial, yeah. emotional, mental, physical, you know. So after that, how long did you stay with him? And what was it while you left? What was that turning point? I, the turning point, I stayed with him almost 15 years. It could be more. Wow. Could be more. I stayed with him. I had three kids from that relationship. Um, the turning point in my life, though, is when it was when I had my last son, and our relationship became worse. It 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 became worse. I pierced my nose and my navel, and he didn't approve of it. And I tell him, I didn't do it for you. I do it because I wanted to do it and because I liked it. Um, over time, we had been fussing and arguing about it and stuff like that. And the breaking point when we started fighting. And then one night he came in after we had many squabbles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to take out my nose ring and I decided I wasn't going to take it out. Right. And then he spat in my face. And wow. I just said, you know what? If I don't leave, I'm going to kill him or he's going to kill me. So I just decided there and then, I just took my kids and I packed my bag and I went to stay with my sister for a while. Over the time though, I gathered all the cash that I had in both my account and the kids' account and then I just rented a place and I've been on my own from 2016 until now. Did he ever make any attempt to apologize for the disrespect that he disrespected you? Yes, he had done that. He had done that on several occasions. I didn't thought it was genuine at, at that point because I've heard I'm sorry so many times. Right. I've heard it. Um, I was given up to get married to him and to start over and stuff like that. But that was out of my hand because I got the opportunity to be free and to actually unwind and stuff. So I didn't want what he was offering to me anymore. I didn't believe him. I didn't think that he wanted to change because he didn't accept that he had done something wrong to me. He's always saying it was my fault and it's because of me that it happened. Yeah, he doesn't want to abuse and never take accountability or responsibility for the yeah. abuse that they offer their, uh, or give their um, spouse or partner. So that's a very weak. Yeah. I'm sorry that you went through that. But going on a positive note now, um, let me know when you start to advance as a person. When I started to advance as a person, it was when I um, I was actually talking to one of my aunties in Canada. And I, I'm always singing. And I wrote this song that 
I call I'm so broken. Yeah. And she said to me, No, Kim, you're not broken, you're only bent. Oh. And, and then and then I started sending it to persons and persons keep telling me the same thing. And I was here on a Sunday and I had a push to go to the beach, push to go to the beach, push to go to the beach. And when I went to the beach, I met Ibo Fire. Right. When I met Ibo Fire, I, I, I was just so drawn to him. And we started talking and I wanted to do a collab with him and stuff like that. And he said to me, what you're looking for, I can't really give it to you right now, but I know somebody who can. And then he introduced me to you. Right. <laughs> you. Mm -hmm. And I was taken aback because nobody had ever in my life welcomed me in anything they're doing with open arms without a price, right. without giving something up. It was always a bargain. So when you, I had introduced me to you and you said I could be a part of MSC TV network, I was glad because I feel like I was worth while I was doing something. So when I went to Ochi and did my first movie, Old Fact Who, yeah, when I went and did my first movie in Ochi, I saw where my life was heading. I didn't just have the opportunity of being just a singer anymore. I had the opportunity of being in movies. And then when we start brainstorming of what I like and stuff like that, and I said I wanted to do the talk show, and you had made me the host of the woman to woman and said that was my show. <laughs> my life started there because yeah, that's all true. My all my dream was finally coming true. The strength that I got, it was when I did the first woman to woman talk show. Yeah, we were talking about abuse. And I had my first guest, uh, Miss Foster Davis. And she was telling me about her situation with her stepfather that she was raped. And her mom blamed her for it. Mm -hmm. Then I said, listen, this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And Here's where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I think Woman to Woman was a turning point for you um, in MSC TV network. And um, I'm going to get back to that, but I want to talk a little bit more about the music because um, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, and I, I buffy you too. <laughs> Plus he's cute. Yeah. yeah. And he has a nice... Um, loving genuine spirit about him and i love his music uh but the music circumstances um i really love that song and there's a few more but there is a rude song that you got out that had me had to read a couple of psalms after and that's god for forgiveness but i love it and i'm pleased to say in 2022 um, hopefully by March, we're going to do a music video for you, um, Slippery When Wet. And that was going viral within MSE TV Network. All the girls that were acting like they were decent church girls and just, uh, including myself, uh, was uh, singing Slippery When Wet. What made you come up with them lyrics? No. All right, Slipper When Wet, it was just bringing out Kibidi. It You don't get to that level unless you're really comfortable and you're really feeling somebody. Right. When I wrote that song, um, I was comfortable and um, I was really feeling the person. I, still I can feel tell. It. That's the only person that I've been with through my entire life that I'm so close to and so comfortable being around. Who did you say who this person is? <laughs> I can only say that's my boy toy. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I, I get it and I'm glad. And uh, we have a short little virgin. Virgin. You see what you did? <laughs> I said virgin. Virgin. You can't remember. With me a virgin. <laughs> anyway. 
We are dead with love. We have a small version on um, YouTube at MSE TV Network, Slippery When Wet, Kabibi, so go check it out. But the real official long version will be out next year, March, on YouTube. So I'm very proud of you. Now, you just seem to be growing and growing within yourself as a person, as a music artist, as an actress, and also as now you've been promoted to um, acting um, assistant uh, producer for MSD TV. So you're really uh, throwing some high balls here, making decisions with me, critical ones. And I think you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, you're responsible for a lot of teens across the world. Uh, for people who don't know, MSC TV Network is a global performing arts and we have a lot of directors all around the world and we have a lot of actors, music artists, comedians, etc. and talk or, you know, talk show hosts. And yeah. um, basically you support me with making certain decisions and get the job done and you get the job done nicely, I must say. So yes, I did. Yes, I did. yeah, you've come a long way. So do you want to talk a little bit of some about the movies that you've been in? Yeah, I've been in Ulf Park two, three and four. I have played different characters in those. I have wowed myself. I've also directed Daddy's Girl. That's my first movie that I took on. <laughs> yeah. And you've done a I, great job. Yes, as a director. And I also, we did two orphanage play, Bami, Orphanage 1 and 2, that I'm also a part of. I've played different roles in those also. Mm -hmm. Which I love. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm hoping to have an or orphanage three sometime next year to finalize that series, you know, because, uh, and that has to deal with the young people, you know, yes. because we're yes. trying to uplift the, the young people, the youth, them in MSE TV network. So, and we also are trying, um, hopefully we want to implement by next year, some of 2022, a program, um, that deals with the youths um, at schools, you know, to encourage the young people to be a part of our drama team and our series and stuff like that. So it's looking really great right now. Yeah. And also to be a mentor to them also. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, which is needed. We need more things like that across the whole world for these youths so they don't feel forsaken. They have a voice also. And MSD TV Network plans to bring that voice out for them and empowering them and giving them hope, you know? So it's really a fantastic thing. So what are your plans for the future, Kibibi? My plans for the future, I think you already know, <laughs> know most of them. But my plan is to continue doing what I'm doing in MSC TV Network. Um, start my EP soon and I'm also waiting for Corona to leave us alone so that I can do Daddy's Girl too. Oh, no. And hopefully we start um, doing back our movies and also our plays um, in all the other countries that we have like in Africa yeah, and in Trinidad. So my plan is just here waiting for everything to settle down a bit. Yeah, yeah, but in the work. meantime, we're going to be doing talk shows yeah. such as um, Woman to Woman. We're going to have a new talk show called Exhale Ex by the Florida team, you know, and uh, let's talk music as well. So we're still going to be busy. It's just that we're in lockdown for a while because you know that the virus has gotten vicious. And there's a new strain. So we can't put our staff, our employees, our actors at risk for them being on set and somebody might have it and pass it. So we just have to be patient, but we have other things that we're doing. Um, we just want everybody to uh, go over to MSC TV right now network and subscribe and watch. We have 
over a thousand different content on our YouTube channel, which I know you will enjoy. Well, Kabibi, thank you for sharing your touching story. Um, I've learned a lot. You're very strong. We're very proud of you. And we hope to interview you again sometime next year. Okay? It's my Take pleasure care. being here. All right. Bye. Thank you. God bless. Hey, Kabibi, slippery when wet. Hey. <laughs>